Hello and welcome to a comprehensive camo guide. I've seen the comments asking for diamond rifles, diamond snipers, how to shoot down aircraft with the launchers. I held off for a bit, but I've now earned well over a dozen gold camos in this game across every main category. So how about we talk about all of it, right here, right now, as usual with timestamps in the description to help jump around. With the camo challenges in this game being fairly simple overall, there just wasn't enough good, non-trivial advice to make videos for every weapon class. Maybe that would help me in the search engine, but I think I'd just be wasting all of our time with how much overlap there would be, and I don't want to sit there telling you the same obvious things in 8 videos. I'll try to give you only the most relevant advice, and I think I've come up with some things you might not already be doing, so let's get into it. We'll be breaking things down into four categories. First up, assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs, and pistols all require 100 headshots each for the main grind portion, so we should talk about headshots, the traditional camo challenge. In class building, the one obvious great attachment for headshots is high caliber, which you can use on the assault rifles and pistols. In any game where high caliber is a thing, well, of course you'd want to be dealing more damage to the head, that'll help you with headshots, go figure. Although with the two-shot killers like the Grand and SVT, it doesn't appear to help at all since it doesn't make it a one-shot kill, at least in this current version of the game, who knows, that could change in the future. And it is dealing more damage, which could help through walls or on injured enemies, just to be clear. But yeah, who would have thought? High caliber, I'm sure that tip really blew your mind, right? No pun intended with the headshots blowing your mind. Okay, moving on. Aside from that, some other attachments are nice, like a grip for accuracy and a clear optic like the reflex sight. Sure, they can help you line up headshots, but they don't help as directly as high caliber. Other things, you could try to stun people with a tactical to line up a headshot, but I don't find that any easier. I wouldn't bother. And finally, there is no godly basic training for headshots. You could make a case for any of the combat trainings people like. Primed makes a lot of sense, I think. For something like the rifles, both benefits are great. That extra attachment means you can get a clear optic, a grip, and high caliber without needing infantry. You might want a quick draw grip too if you can. And the flinch reduction means you can feel a bit more comfortable aiming for the head, not the body, and you hopefully won't get flinched off your target. But other things like hustle for general combat, why not? Look out for spotting enemies super easily, even through the dust and dirt of explosions. Those are all fantastic, but they're good in general. It's not like they're especially good for headshots. Just use whatever you were already using, no big deal. You'll be needing a lot of headshots, so you don't need to obsessively confine yourself to one training the entire time. And unless you're really rushing to get it done, try to forget about them entirely. Focus on those daily orders or something. You can let it happen over time. Now as far as what mode to play or what maps to look out for, you could make a case for hardcore mode because you can aim at the head confidently knowing that one shot to the head will probably always kill, meaning you don't have to worry about the weapon recoil. So if you're very accurate, you could tap away and do very well. It might be especially good for some higher recoil stuff like the SVT, maybe the 1911, but you also die super quickly in hardcore too. It isn't the magic easy headshot mode. And I'm a big war fan, not a big hardcore fan, so it's up to you, but I don't think you need it for headshots. We will be revisiting hardcore later though. So you all know I love war mode and many parts of it happen to be great for headshots and I want you to know I would never tell you to go complete challenges in war mode unless you're also helping the team by doing so. The sanctity of people playing the objective in war mode must be preserved. But guess what? When you're on the defending half, killing people is the objective. And in many scenarios, if you're going up against a team that's decent at throwing themselves at the objective, which people are more inclined to do in war mode with KD not being counted, that can mean many easy headshots for you. I think the best example of this currently, although keep an eye out for those DLC war maps, is defending the bridge building on Operation Breakout. That's an objective where people have to go to a thing, lie down, and just stay there, allowing you to pick them off. Now I've been montaging together a bunch of sniping, because for some reason I saved hours of doing that, which is nice for one-shot kills, I guess, but you don't need headshots for the snipers. More relevant would be bipod LMGs. Those are plenty fun to be doing the same thing here. Either side of the map will work well. This is an objective where lookout is a very nice basic training to spot people. Many of the assault rifles are also plenty accurate enough. You can do the same thing. Plus, you have that high caliber bonus. Now, SMGs and pistols, outside of maybe the Type 100 and high caliber P08, not going to be as easy to snipe with them, but that doesn't mean you're out of luck. You can cross the bridge at any time, even when not built. You can hop over using the left side here. That usually only works if they're using tons of smoke grenades, which they typically are to help build the bridge. With no smoke, you'll likely get killed. But if you make it, that can allow for some surprise headshots, or much more reliable when they've reached the 50% mark, especially with smoke cover. You can hang out behind these barrels and really rack up the headshots on people who just keep flinging their bodies at the bridge to get a couple more percent. And because deaths don't matter, Plenty of people do that, instead of taking the time to try to kill you first, I guess for fear of getting shot by someone else before they can build. So that's a very fun objective for headshots, but it's only one objective, what about the rest of the map? 
Well, the other objectives are not as good, but at any point where someone has stopped to place a charge at a barricade or build one up, I've gotten many headshots from that over time, and those are on every map. In the ammo depot, plenty of opportunity on people lying down to plant. After that, there's the tank escorting. You can pick people off who hop into that tank gun. At least their movement is very predictable, and it's helpful that it tells you when people are near the tank. That's very nice to get the drop on people. And of course, that applies to any war map that involves tank escorting, like basically all of Operation Griffin. Neptune isn't that great, although as an attacker, I do like sweeping into B and taking out the mounted gun people not paying attention. More than anything, I think war mode makes sense in general. The fact that KD doesn't matter naturally means that on attack, people care more about the objective and less about their life, more so than any other regular objective mode. So that leads to more scenarios where you can have the time to line up headshots. But hey, I like playing war mode anyway. If you don't and would rather play hardpoint or you really enjoy hardcore, just do that. You can obviously get headshots in any mode over time. The pistols especially, you can take your time with those other than the machine pistol, which I quickly got done to have for this video. I don't feel like I need to rush them by using them exclusively. You have one on your class almost all the time, so whenever you come up behind someone who isn't paying attention, that's a good time to pull out the pistol and add another headshot to the pile. Or you could throw the duelist training on and run around with only akimbo high caliber pistols hoping for random headshots. That could be fun too. I didn't like it personally, but Akimbo Extended Mag's pistols was fun for the five kill streaks you need. Speaking of, after earning all those headshots, none of the remaining challenges need much special attention. These are nearly the same for every primary weapon type. You need 50 kills with the proper division for the weapon type, and 50 kills with a different division. Okay, no problem. Five double kills, that'll happen very naturally. In fact, here's a clip to show you how long you can take for a double kill. Yep, that counted. In war mode, that challenge could just happen in one game. And get five five kill streaks with the weapon. Hopefully not a problem for most people. If you are newer to the game or the weapon you're using is kind of trash, unless it's a weapon that clearly excels in hardcore, I will once again recommend war mode as a defender. All the same reasons. Attackers are playing to win, not to stay alive. If you go for kill streaks as an attacker, though, you're kind of an asshole, and it isn't even going to be any easier than just playing hardpoint or something. This challenge that I skipped over here does change around a bit. For assault rifles, you need ten long shots, and and, uh, well, gee, I wonder what I could say. How about war mode? Slap a four-time scope on there and just back up. The lookout training comes in handy once again here. Almost every objective has some very long lines of sight that allow you to pick people off on the objective or rushing towards the objective. No problem. And yeah, even as an attacker sometimes, don't focus on kill streaks. but if the rest of your team is already all about that objective, having one or two people killing and distracting the defenders is a good thing for your team. You just can't have too many people doing the same thing. Alternatively, without war mode, I guess you could always play Gustav Cannon, and hardcore typically is another thing that can make long shots easier, since you need to land fewer shots. For SMGs, LMGs, and pistols though, you don't need long shots, you need payback medals, and no guide needed there. Finally, the pistols do differ with these two challenges, since there is no pistol-related division. You just need near-death kills, and shortly after swapping kills, for near-death kills, if you're having no luck, you could go to hardcore mode, take some fall damage so that your screen is red, and run around killing people like that, since you don't regenerate health, every kill will be near death. But there should be no need, you only need five, and that will happen very quickly on its own. And for swap kills, same thing, it'll just happen. If you want to focus on it though, there are several basic trainings that provide faster weapon swapping to make it a little bit easier. Now we can move on to snipers and shotguns, which will take a fraction of the time we spent on headshots, both in this video and in playing the game. They require 100 one-shot kills for the main grind. For the bolt actions, that will happen very easily. For the carabine, you would need to go for headshots to one-shot kill, which you could do. Or the very easy solution is to go to hardcore, maybe use the four times, run around with it. And same for the shotguns, being fairly weak in this game even after that tiny buff in the first patch, may as well go to hardcore for all of those, especially things like the toggle action. Just go to hardcore and the one-shot kills will fly by. Another okay option, only for the drilling, is that rifle bullet attachment, but you need to have it unlocked, and I personally prestige my weapons, so hardcore it is. And all the challenges after those one-shot kills are things we've already talked about. I don't think there are any questions I need to answer about them. Even the sniper double kills, like I showed before, those don't have to be collaterals or anything. You have a couple seconds to get two back-to-back -back kills. That'll happen all the time. Dare I say it, especially in war mode. Well, I guess we're about done with those two. If you want a quick diamond weapon category, those would be the two you want to go for.
Now the launchers both require you to shoot down 100 aircraft, which will be 99% recon planes. Even the counter recon planes are a bit harder, they fly faster and farther away. If you're having accuracy trouble with the launchers, I hear everybody saying that using launcher variants makes them inaccurate right now. Seems like a bug, obviously, if that's true. I don't have any launcher variants, so I never ran into that. But if you want to be safe, just use the base launcher for now, and they should hopefully get that fixed. The M1 Bazooka is incredibly accurate. It's meant to be the anti-air launcher, so you should have no problems with that. However, the Panzer Shrek can be more unpredictable. Sometimes it fires very straight, but it can curve off path. It's meant to be the anti-personnel launcher, so it'll be a bit more annoying. But it does fly faster than the M1's rocket. I've seen many people complaining about shooting down recon planes with the Panzer Shrek, and I was really bracing myself for yet another dumb launcher challenge courtesy of Sledgehammer, but I didn't find it to be that bad at all. Now maybe I'm imagining this, but it seemed like whenever I fired at a recon plane, the rocket flew much straighter than if you just fire a rocket off into the sky, or maybe it hit the recon plane before it had a chance to curve too much, because when you fire it into the sky, it definitely doesn't fly straight. I know, it is kind of dumb though that they didn't make the challenge kill 100 players, or even kill 200 players, that would be fine, because it suits the strength of the launcher. But this is no advanced warfare, shooting down paladins with the mayhem. It's not that bad, really. You'll want to pay attention to what maps the recon plane flies closer on. For example, the USS Texas, as much as people dislike it, is one of the best. When you're on both ends of the ship, the plane will fly directly overhead. Here on Point to Hawk, it's not too bad, and other things like Flak Tower. It also really depends where you are on the map. If you're on the opposite side as the plane. It'll be a much harder shot. Same thing for Gibraltar. But on things like Aachen and London docks with the buildings all around, and Arden Forest with all the trees, it's just not worth it with the Panzer Shrek. Plus, they fly pretty far away on those maps. It's a grind, that's for sure. I could sit here and show you clips all day, but other than that, not much other advice. You just gotta do it. Most of the follow-up challenges after that are fairly simple, many of them you only have to do one time. Like with the M1 here, five score streaks within 20 seconds of them being deployed, it can't get any easier. Five in one match? Well, with the M1, just play a long game of hardpoint or something. For me, it happened on the first game I played, along with several other challenges at the same time. Just gotta get a little lucky for enemies to be calling them in. Be listening for the guy to call it out, enemy recon aircraft observed. If you have a cool teammate using espionage, they could shoot the aircraft once to tag them on the map for you. But that's some next level cooperation. Then 10 direct impact kills. Cool, that's what the M1 is great at. It's accurate and a direct impact will always kill. But 2 rapid kills. Well, that's what the M1 is not very great at, because the blast radius is garbage. You might think hardcore DOM, maybe, but I don't think so, because the issue isn't that you get a ton of hit markers with the M1. The issue is that you shoot it pretty close and it does no damage at all. Hardcore won't help with that, and in hardcore you just get melted back. You could approach this by going for what I'll call an actual double kill with one rocket, which you could do once again in war mode, I got most of mine there. I got one in hardpoint, and I'm sad because I didn't record the last one, but it was an example of not actually getting a double kill with one rocket. I was just in kill confirmed, I shot one guy, reloaded, shot another guy, and that does work. Like we've gone over, they don't have to be extremely fast to count as a double kill. You do have time to reload the M1 in between, so you can try both of those methods. Now with the Panzer Shrek, that rapid kill challenge becomes much easier, while all the other ones become a little bit harder, with the only potentially painful one being destroy five aircraft in one game. Now that I've gotten some experience using the Panzer Shrek, that doesn't sound as bad as people were describing to me, all the horror stories of trying to shoot down recon planes. However, that snow camo challenge for 5 in 1 game does appear to be bugged right now. Everyone was reporting that even when they did this in one continuous game like Hardpoint, as opposed to two halves of domination, even then it didn't count. So I guess just put that one on hold for now until they give an update regarding it. When I eventually go for it, it'll be in Hardpoint on one of these maps I mentioned, and you just have to hope a bunch of planes get called in. Luckily Luckily, you only have to do it one time, or maybe it'd be cool if they actually changed the challenge instead of just fixing it. Maybe make it kill 10 players with the Panzer Shrek in one game or something. That would make a little more sense. Those are the two launchers, though. Really, the worst part about them is that you have to be using the launched basic training the entire time. That is a pain. I really don't think having launchers just be a secondary category would have made the game unbalanced at all, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy about it because it means recon planes stay up way more often. They would cost way too much to earn if they got shot down all the time. Now the final type of camo grind in this game is the shovel, and I assume all melee weapons. I'll attempt to future-proof this video, not too hard to predict more melee weapons, like the combat knife, trench knife, and ice pick were found in the game, right? 
Well, the shovel requires 200 kills for the main grind. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'll be working on it passively, just keeping it on my class. And also, whenever that daily order comes up for five shovel kills, I'll get there eventually. That's a decent strategy if you don't want to use the shovel more than you have to. If you want to work on only the shovel, though, then there is that good old serrated basic training with the faster melee and some tacticals to maybe help you get closer to people. You can combine that with airborne for the quick movement or maybe mountain for the silent movement so people don't hear you coming. You can either run around getting kills like crazy or play kind of campy and guard doorways. And that's about it for a strategy unless they add a game mode someday like slasher or sticks and stones that might make things easier assuming cameras are counted. If that has happened then obviously do that. After that little grind you need 10 backstabber medals, 5 near death kills, and 5 payback medals. Those will all happen easily. Then you need to kill someone with a shovel, pick up their weapon, and kill them with it, earning the backfire medal 5 times. That is going to require more effort, it won't just happen naturally, but you only need 5 so hop into some more games or whatever you like playing. I just hate the thought of trying to get melee kills on many of those multiplayer maps. Not a fan of the design, like many people, where flanking is so hard and you're often going to run into people face to face and get gunned down because you have a shovel. Yeah, maybe I'm just a war fanboy, but it seems way better in how it flows. Well, overall, that shouldn't take too long. I know maybe you're like, well, how can you say that when you haven't done it yet in this game? But I've done that exact challenge many times before. I think Black Ops 3 had it for their melee weapons. So just melee kill anyone, take their gun, and try to kill as many people as you can with that gun, hoping that one of the people you get was the original guy. It clearly isn't too bad of a challenge. After that, you do need five five kill streaks with the shovel. Might be mildly annoying. Obviously, for that, you do want to go shovel only, and maybe have to play more carefully. I would say run around and get two kills first, and then you can resort to hanging out around corners because you have something to lose. But after that, you are done with the shovel, and we have now covered every weapon type in the game in one video. It got kinda long, but I told you there really wasn't enough to split up into eight videos or whatever for every category, unless I added a ton of obvious filler and had to repeat everything in every video. I think I've gone over all the key things you should know for earning all the camos. I'm sure there are some other anecdotal tips here and there people could share. Feel free to do that in the comments if you enjoyed a method that wasn't mentioned. But that's all for the camos. We can get back to some more mode stuff now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.